Robert Skidelsky, John Maynard Keynes, 1883-1946, Economist, Philosopher, Statesman. Dive into the fascinating world of John Maynard Keynes, a pioneering economist, philosopher, and statesman whose life and works continue to influence economic thought today. This book summary of Robert Skidelsky's John Maynard Keynes, 1883-1946, Economist, Philosopher, Statesman offers a captivating exploration of Keynes' upbringing, education, personal life, and his crucial contributions to the field of economics. Throughout our summary, you'll learn about the development of Keynesian economic theory, his thoughts on monetary policy and the gold standard, the impact of his famed work The General Theory of Employment, interest and money, and his role in shaping the post-war financial system at Bretton Woods. The Life and Times of John Maynard Keynes John Maynard Keynes, born in 1883, was the first child of Neville Keynes and his wife Florence Ada Brown. Neville studied economics and lectured at Cambridge University, where he met and married Florence Ada Brown. John showed early talent for logic and mathematics and excelled in these subjects, winning numerous academic prizes and a place at Eton. He joined the Cambridge Union, where he spoke frequently on politics and demonstrated impressive forensic abilities. Keynes also became a member of the Cambridge Conversazione Society, an elite and introverted secret society that exercised a formative influence on him. Overall, Keynes was born into and inherited the aspirations and tensions of a particular moment in history, making him one of its foremost products. The Bloomsbury Circle Keynes and Strachey's homosexuality led them to create a code of ethics they called higher sodomy. They believed men were superior to women, and their male lovers were preferable. When they helped a young man, Arthur Lee Hobhouse, get elected to the apostles in favor of sex appeal over intellect, it split Strachey and Keynes. While Keynes had love affairs with men, he met ballerina Lydia Lopakova in 1918. Their marriage lasted until Keynes' death in 1946. Keynes and the Pervasiveness of Uncertainty The life and works of Maynard Keynes were shaped by his interest in monetary policy, which was motivated by his sense of the precariousness of capitalist civilization. Keynes' most persistent ideas concerned the pervasiveness of uncertainty and the duty of governments to keep economic life up to the mark. His book, Indian Currency and Finance, proposed a new currency management regime that predicted the ideal currency of the future. During World War I, Keynes worked for the Treasury and participated in the first conference to organize war credits among the Allies, which led to a complicated system of loans and grants that led to problems after the war. Keynes' plea to finance the war via taxation instead of government debt to avoid inflation was not heeded, leading to an unfavorable impression on Lloyd George. Keynes was then engaged in trying to extricate Britain from another fiscal crisis caused by the U.S. Federal Reserve Board's directive to restrict credit abroad. His book, The Economic Consequences of the Peace, predicted that peace would be short-lived because politics dominated economics at Versailles and the liability imposed on Germany was unrealistic. Keynes, the economist who put ethics first. This summary explores the life and works of John Maynard Keynes, an influential economist of the early 20th century. Keynes believed that economic decisions should consider ethical ideals and be aware of the uncertainty of the future. John Maynard Keynes was more than just an economist of the early 20th century. He placed a great deal of emphasis on ethical ideals and acknowledged the uncertainties of the future in his works. In his treatise on probability, published in 1921, Keynes argued that rational economic actors must consider not only the optimal way to achieve a goal, but also the ethicality of the ends they seek. He believed that seeking a smaller but more certain objective was more rational than pursuing a larger, less probable one. Keynes also recognized that economic behavior is uncertain and that economic conclusions can only be probable at best. He cautioned against highly formal presentations of economic ideas, as they can create an illusion of certainty where there is none. Thus, he believed that rhetoric and intuition should be part of the economic argument. In his 1923 book, A Tract on Monetary Reform, 
Keynes criticized the gold standard and its impact on price stability. He posited that to achieve stable prices, monetary policy should stabilize monetary demand, not monetary supply. This was because the speed of spending, or the velocity of circulation, could cause prices to rise or fall, regardless of the amount of money in circulation. Keynes argued that returning to the gold standard at pre-war rates would result in severe credit restrictions, wage cuts, and inflation. Churchill's decision to return Britain to the gold standard in 1925, despite Keynes's warnings, led to overvaluation of sterling and economic hardship for the country. Keynes's treatise on money, published in 1924, expanded upon his belief that banks created money and therefore only the Bank of England could balance savings and investments in the UK. However, the gold standard made it impossible for the bank to adjust interest rates to match savings. This resulted in massive unemployment and depression in Britain. Keynes demonstrated how such depressed economic conditions occurred when expected profits were lower than the market's interest rates. Following the 1929 Wall Street crash, real interest rates rose despite nominal interest rates falling. In 1932, Britain left the gold standard for a second time. Keynes's magnum opus, The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, began to take shape in lectures he delivered in 1932. By 1934, he was lecturing from the book's proofs. The book described the economy as an aggregate, where employment or unemployment resulted from the community's spending and investment decisions. Keynes portrayed economic decisions as a drama of hope and fear, where not spending was a hedge against the uncertainty of the future. Keynes's influence on economic policy during the 1930s and 1940s cannot be overstated. He played a pivotal role in designing the post-war financial architecture at Bretton Woods. However, the eventual collapse of that architecture in the 1970s may have been predicted by some of Keynes's early writings on the gold standard. Keynes's emphasis on ethical ideals and his recognition of the uncertainties of the future make his economic theories relevant even today. As we reach the end of our summary of John Maynard Keynes, 1883-1946, economist, philosopher, statesman, we're left with a profound appreciation for this remarkable thinker and the lasting influence of his ideas. From his early days at Eton and Cambridge to his instrumental role in shaping modern economic policy, Keynes emerges not only as a brilliant intellectual but also as a man of action. Although the eventual collapse of the post-war financial architecture he helped design seemed almost inevitable, his contributions to the understanding of monetary policy, the gold standard, and the global economic system will continue to serve as invaluable foundations for economic thought. So, whether you're a student of economics, a policymaker, or just an interested reader, this book summary has provided you with a lively and insightful portrait of a man who indelibly transformed not only the field of economics, but also the history of the 20th century world.